So we've come to the last clearing and airing it out for tonight. And we kept this one a secret for y'all. We sure did. Um, <laughs> what? Bitch, I got my questions ready. <laughs> we about to have some grown folk talk now. This this the last because we this this is the hour here. We giving we giving this an hour because baby this because we still got some foolishness to talk. Just we on do, facts, but huh? listen, we got the we this this. It's a lot, <laughs> and I know y'all people still in the comment section, and I know y'all finna get ready. We talking about things, all, all things black, all things interracial, all things scandal. We laid it out. And Craig, this is my friend. And I'm going to play devil's advocate at all times because it's my friend. Girl, he my friend too. But now. I'm also going to say, no, I agree with you with that bitch. <laughs> it sounds like it sound like Craig about to read him. I don't know. No, I am not. No, I, don't, I am not. I, I don't know how this is going to happen. <laughs> I didn't read Bino and I did not read the Ryan. I was going to say the young guy, Ryan. I didn't read. No, this is, we're having a healthy conversation here. Okay. All right. Okay. So to continue with the healthy conversation and I, and you guys can put your, your questions. And we may read them. We will. There's no may about it. You can put your questions. But in I'm pretty chat. sure I have your questions covered. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Todrick Hall. Hey, hey Todrick. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I've been sitting yes. here watching this interview going on an emotional roller coaster. But first of all, I just have to say this this show is so incredible because I love the fact that y'all giving queer people a space to come and talk about things that we really need to talk about. And it's so funny that at the end of the day, we're all human beings. And when right. people, I've just watched people go from being really, really heated to saying, yeah, I apologize to you. I would love to talk to you about this. Let's get on a group chat. And I think that's really important. I've been wanting to come on this show for a long time, but I was terrified. And that intro just made me a little scared again. <laughs> I was like, I'm so excited to go on. And then you acted like you was uh, resuscitating Jeffrey Dahmer. Or well, no, because no, no, Todd, because we, we're going to talk about it. Like, we're going um, we to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it because you've been wanting to clear the air with a lot of things for so long. Ever since I sent that voice note. Well, no, he's also wanted to clear some things up before. And like, he. So I want to start at the top. What makes you think that you've been canceled, Todrick? Was it the was it the was it the Big Brother house? Was it the the accusations of you only dealing with white people professionally, personally? Professionally, personally, was it the 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 accusations of you? Um, not paying, paying people, your, paying your dancers, paying people. Um, what do you think the GoFundMe, the GoFundMe situation? What do you think has black culture against you? Because I, I, I know you feel that black culture is against you. I don't necessarily feel that black culture at large is against me. I feel, especially when I go places and I see black queer people, I mean, I go on tour every year and I see black queer people there supporting me and showing me love. So I don't feel like as a general consensus, that's the case. I think that I've been involved in a lot of controversy and I kind of lie somewhere in between like mainstream and, and self-made, you know, like I have, people who are publicists for Beyonce are going to say, don't, don't say anything. But I believe when you're somebody who's created by the internet and the internet is, are the people who gave you your platform, ultimately, there's a different type of responsibility to those fans to talk about things. But when you, the people who are advising you say, don't speak on it, don't respond, whatever, I just don't necessarily agree with that. And I think that's part of the reason why people are so passionately invested in you, because they know that if there's something you're going to address it and you're get, they feel, I feel, like I'm sitting in your living room and you're talking to me about what is really going on. And so I've been wanting to talk to you for years and years and years because you know that like when you get on to talk to somebody, you don't want to, you never know if you're walking into a room of people who are going to be supporting you or people who are not. Hi, Tara. Um, you don't know if you're going to be with people who are supporting you and who are not. And I just have wanted to always talk about certain things in a space where I felt 
like somebody was going to listen to me and hear me out and hold me accountable for things, you know, educate me the way I've watched you all do to other people. But also, I don't want to walk into like a lion's den with people who are right. trying to find clickbait to to destroy my character, because I think there's a lot of people who would find joy in that. Right. All right, Craig, start it. So what would you say would be your first, I guess, controversial thing that happened since you've been famous? Um, I don't know. There's been so many. <laughs> There's been so okay, many. Okay, well, let's start. Let's start with the most recent. So recently, you okay. relocated um, to London from mm -hmm. LA, and reports said that your family's house in Texas mm -hmm. uh, burned down. There was an, a GoFundMe that was put up by you. Yeah. To raise money to, I guess, put them in. You know, because I'm assuming they were displaced. Um, yep. to help support them, to get them back up. And so the public was given very much so, well, why is he putting up a GoFundMe fund, fund me for us to support? He should be making money to be able to support his own family. He's friends with uh, Taylor Swift. Um, yeah, and then also um, there was a party that you had. You had a party. And yeah. the people were saying, well, he had this He's party. He's friends with Taylor Swift and Beyonce. And Beyonce. Why couldn't these people help him with that $10,000? And then the question became, um, well, was it a really a going away party? Because the cake said happy birthday. So which one was it? We're in a, we're, we're, we're under inflation right now. So why would the public be responsible for assisting with that? So did you um, want to clarify anything about that? Yeah, I will. I will. There's no questions that are off the table today. So you ask me and I, I will answer it. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, um, okay, y'all are both in the industry. So you understand this. I have now people can see that I have posted four videos. The thing about a fire, what it happens is, I, and I've never gone through this before, but when a fire happens, it's, you need immediate assistance. It's not something people are like, well, do you have insurance? I'm like, people it, it don't send you an insurance check the next day when your fire, when a house burns down, you don't have any clothes, everything is gone. And I knew I was coming to the, to the UK where I am now to do burlesque. I had shot four videos. I had recorded all these albums. I've now already released least those four videos but um i also was moving to to the uk so i was packing up my entire house and moving and in the process of selling my home and there was just like a lot of things that that were going on and when it happened a it, it's there's so many complicated aspects to it but ultimately my i have very powerful and successful friends who, okay, the GoFundMe happened because my fans were like, we've been following you for 15 years. Like if your parents' house burned down, you should start a GoFundMe. I do realize that optics matter and that people were gonna be like, why would Todrick need a GoFundMe? But I was in a position, this industry is feast or famine. Sometimes I love those interviews with Fantasia where she says, you don't know that when the lady's like, you have more money than we do. There are mm -hmm. certain days where I definitely have a lot of, a lot more money than some people do. But then there have been certain times, I'm an independent queer black artist. They, I, I don't have a record label, nobody has helped me. And, um, so I was just in a position where I had just funded four videos and I was like, I can send my parents money, which I did do on my own, by the way. Uh, I never said I didn't do that, but I did not have disposable income to buy my parents a new house immediately. And so my fans asked me to put up the GoFundMe and I did. We raised $10,000, which as you know, is not going to in 2024 in today's market, mm -hmm. be able to change my parents' position, but it can help. Right. And um, so I set the limit to me what seemed like something low so that the fans who were asking me that could do it. And to me, it was an intimate thing with me and the fans that have been following me for years. And somebody else in my life came to me and said, Todrick, I know you've been going through it. I'm going to, I already donated to your parents, but I want to make sure you go off in style. So it was a birthday slash going away party. I sent out an invitation saying it was both. And they uh, covered the bill for the things that happened at my birthday party, but most of the things were donated. Um, and that's that's really just that. But I understand. Well, I, the yeah. and I, and like. I completely understand that. We talked about that behind the scenes. We figured that the party was probably already planned at the same concurrently when that fire happened. But I think, as you say, I think you may have said just now, um, optics do matter. 
um, at that party, it was livestock. Like people were like, "Bitch, they had animals there." Like, yeah, mm-hmm. like where was, they could have used that money for the for the, you know for his family. But okay, so we get that. Um, when it comes to dating, mm-hmm. do you only date white men? Have you dated black men? Um, I, and, I started. And, go ahead. Continue. Go ahead, go ahead. No, I ahead. do not only date white men. I, I have dated all kinds of men. I've dated Puerto Rican men. I have dated black men. I have tried to date Asian men. I said this before. I love, I think because I watched Brandy and Cinderella for so long and she had a Filipino prince that, and to me, I was always like seeking that. But um, I think that like the, the conversation that happened to people before me, I forget his name, Bino, I think it was his mm-hmm. name. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've I've encountered that a lot and that that conversation was triggering for me and it was very difficult to watch you have that conversation with him because I've dated so many men that are like I want to date you but I want to keep it a secret. They don't want me to post stuff about them. They don't when want their family. Black men. Is that what you mean? When I dated black men specifically, my experience is because- <laughs> black Communication is our partner, clarity is our friend. So in other words, what I hear you saying is Sometimes when you date black men or in your experience, when you've dated black men, because you are a star, you are famous yeah. because you have this huge following. There are black men who don't always want to be visible. They don't want their, their younger brothers to see. They don't want their parents to see. They don't want the people at their parents' Co-workers. church to. Uh, and to me, I'm like. I respect wherever you are on your journey, but me coming out was difficult for me. My parents are very religious. I come from the Bible Belt of Texas. I come from nothing, and I don't want to go back in the closet for anybody. I That conversation was like so hard for me to hear because it was internalized homophobia. Mm-hmm. And I think that sometimes that word is so triggering, triggering and you don't want to even even consider entertaining the idea that you are homophobic when you understand what homophobia has done to you. But when I sense that, which is, it's very prevalent in our community, I I can't do that. I have to walk away from it. Now I'm gonna be real with you. I grew up very, very sheltered. My mom did not let me watch like uh, adult entertainment. And I watched um, a lot of Disney Channel. My mom would only let me watch like, PG-13 and rated R, if it was uh, something about a real life uh, person who was impactful in the black community, I got to watch Malcolm X, I got to watch the story of the Jackson Five, I got to watch Five Heartbeats, I got to watch, um, you know, just movies like that. I didn't get to watch like Friday and Set It Off and stuff like that when I was growing up. I had to wait until later, not because my mom wanted to shield me from black culture, but I think that it wasn't appropriate for me. So when I was watching the Disney Channel, I was one of those people that was so fascinated by it. And I do think that I'm one of those people who has been affected by seeing Zac Efron and Freddie Prince Jr. and all these people. Um, and for me, my journey has just been so strange because I started taking ballet when I was seven years old. And I just got made fun of a lot at school and a lot of black kids were not interested in hanging out with me. They didn't want to talk about musicals. They didn't want to talk about ballet. They thought it was gay and sissy-ish. And I'm not saying the white kids weren't feeling that way, but they were not the ones that were saying it to me. It was the people at my church, the people that when we would go on like little field trips with all the black kids in the community, the YMCA, it was those people. So I think that my relationship with black men specifically, romantically, and just in day-to-day life, is a little bit um sometimes it can it can there can be like friction there. I think it's interesting because I draw the comparison of what you just said to things that Madison has said. It was it's been black people that have clawed her and her back that have tried to keep her out of rooms. It was black people that that taunted you and teased you because you were too eccentric and too into the arts. So and I have said this sitting here. There are instances where there are black men who identify as gay, who look for love and friendship and community outside of the black community because the black community hurt them. It was too painful to stay. So again, I had said this before when Don Lemon was on Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett, that was the light bulb moment for me because he said on that show, It's not that I'm not interested in dating black men. It's just that when I've now that I've climbed to a certain level, there just aren't many there. And then the ones who are there are not out. And I've worked too hard to become who I am to go back into a closet. So I think it's I think I think there 
there's something to say. I mean, there's something to think about when we when we talk about that. When so, we look at that. So, Tajik, let's talk yes, about this really quick because they, they they're flooding our questions over here. Oh, really? Yes, they are flooding. Like this. <laughs> Um, it says, Todrick, can you clear up the controversy what happened between him and Jay Smith? How does he feel about DL men? Has he ever been one? How does he feel about parenting? Why does he favor male dancers versus female? What happened with Jay Smith? Who is Jay I Smith? I don't know who that is. Well, let me ask this in place of that. Uh, the questions that keep coming, did you pay the dancers? Because there were questions oh, yeah. about the dancers. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will try to make this brief. I have done 750 videos on my YouTube channel. I, I am a hustler. I've been I've been working for 15 years and I don't know very many people who work as hard as I do. And I, I again, I'm independent. I think that people see my videos and I've kind of gotten good at catfishing people into thinking like, oh, he must have this crazy budget. I, I don't have that. I have done everything, 750 videos by myself. So to make a general statement about do you pay your dancers, do you not pay your dancers, it's kind of like a difficult one. Because when I started on YouTube, that was like 15, 12 years ago or something. It was a different landscape. It was the Wild West. I have definitely done videos where I haven't paid dancers. I think the, the whole situation with the dancer thing is it, it kind of is po posed as a scenario that makes it seem like Todrick told some dancers he was going to pay them and then did not. Did the dancers right. from the Nails Hair Hips Hills video get paid? No, they did not. But they all signed a form saying that they were coming there for free. I posted it on Instagram saying we're looking for dancers It's for free. It was my first single I ever did. Like I, I had only done like Wizard of Oz videos before that yeah. and stuff. It was the first time I ever came out with the video. I posted and say I'm doing a video, which by the way, is like not uncommon for people who are not signed to record labels a lot of these drag queens do it but they're not getting 50 million views on their videos so nobody cares and nobody's hating on them mm -hmm. um so those people those dancers knew that i to me i just think if you are somebody who has to ask that you should ask yourself is there anything that somebody black could have done in 2019 before everybody got woke and put the black square on the BLM and acted like they care about Black Lives Matter, but they have since deleted it because it doesn't look good on their fucking Instagram aesthetic? Um, is there anything that somebody black could have done to get 75 people in a room, say they were going to pay them, not pay them, and not get a, fi a class action lawsuit signed, filed against them that I would lose? Like, there's nothing I could have done to keep 75 of those dancers quiet they aren't saying that they were offered pay because they know that they weren't offered pay you know i'm not that dumb that i would put their first and last names in the credits of the video and then be like i'm not gonna pay you deal with it that's that's ridiculous and it's crazy to me that people will believe it but i think they want to believe it so they don't ask questions okay so lyric has a question and he said did he pay manila luzon she was supposed Baby. I, I I don't want to talk about this subject for very long because I don't want to say something. I don't want to be in no more drama, but I have never, ever in my entire life offered Manila Luzon a penny. I was friends with her. She she offered, she, a, a guy asked me if I wanted to do a Halloween party. I don't throw parties. Anybody who's followed me is like, Todrick doesn't throw parties. He said he was going to do a fundraiser for Halloween, giving money to LGBTQ plus youth. And I said, great, you can use my name. He was my friend's fiance, then turned husband. And I said, sure, I'll do it. Um, he then asked Manila Luzon and a whole bunch of drag queens to do it. He ended up asking me for $3,000 to help him with the project that I was supposed to get back. I was do donating my time, but I paid $3,000 for him to help me. This man disappeared, did not pay anybody. And Manila Luzon reached out to me and asked me, hey, can you get in touch with this person? I have all the screenshots to prove it. She said, um, how do I get in touch with this guy i said how much are you owed i argued back and forth with him sent her all the screenshots where i was arguing for her to get her pay it was six hundred dollars i never owed her any money i don't know why she would go on the internet and say that i owed her money i never have owed that woman money and that's on my mama <laughs> ever okay, okay so let's say her because i don't owe her money still in the space of dancers let's talk about colorism because a lot of the people in the streets have said the internet streets have said there are never any black dancers in your video if they are in there, they're really fair skin next to white. Um, what do you say to that? I think that, that anybody who's saying that is lazy and hasn't watched the videos. If you watch the videos, if you go look up Nails Hair Hips to Hills right now 
and look at the people who are surrounding me. Go look up my video for Fag. Go look up the video for Raining Fellas. And you just do a Where's Waldo and count them. That's just, it's crazy to me. It's people on Twitter that are, are like, they probably have seen two of my videos. They feel like they're white. I did an interview with somebody who, when I did my Forbidden album that said, are you making this Black album now because you've been criticized and because Strand of Oz was so white. And I was like, the collaborations on Strand of Oz are RuPaul, Wayne Brady, Tracy Toms, Amber Riley, Jordan Sparks, um, Tamar Braxton, Bob Brandy. the Drag Queen. Bra that Brandy was on the album he was talking about. But even then, I was like, I think you see my work and it's, it's fucking cheesy to you and it's Broadway. And so you're like, it's white. And even when you did my album, um, TS, you were on my Femulent album, people were like, he makes music for white people and everybody's recirculating it. But on that album, I think my collaborations were you, Brandy on that album, Nicole Scherzinger, who was also not white, and Tyra Banks and Shaka Khan. There was no white people on there. So I'm like, I don't know. It's just, to me, I don't know. I don't know. Right. I want somebody to explain to me why they feel like it i'm making art for white people i will say i post videos and i don't go through a casting company i say hey i post on instagram all the time i'm shooting a video show up if you want and a lot of my art speaks to white people a lot of them also are the ones with the disposable income to learn how to dance have dance training can sing and whatever but they show up and um i just cast whoever shows up you know and i so i have become more cognizant about it i used to make videos i used to get canceled for making videos that were anti-black or supporting uh and like things that people felt were anti-black stereotypes and so when i saw that much like the guest that you had before mm -hmm. she was like you need to do your research and when people are telling you why they're offended you should address it and change the behavior and i feel like I've, I've done that i had this video called beauty and the beat where it was like bell in the hood that was one of my first viral videos and i did a few videos like that maybe six or eight videos like that and once i heard the community say we don't like these videos they are feel problematic to us it never happened again because Mm -hmm. That's not my, I don't want to be on, I mean, I know that sometimes I'm blessed with the microphone to be able to represent Black queerness, and some people don't like that because they, my, the way I show up in the space doesn't look like the way they would want it to be. But at the end of the day, if I have the ability to do that, I want to address the situation. And if I hear feedback, I try to implement it when I can, you know? Yeah. So, Todrick, I also want to say, that when we did the Dick This Big um, album, the song, yeah. the song, I had no problem with you paying me. You, we, we did our splits. We did it. Boom, bam, mm -hmm. bam. Your lawyer, my people. Then, boom, we yeah. were done. So I don't have any financial problems with you at all. For the, yeah, so we, I, we, I just want to talk about my, my experience. That I didn't have any financial <laughs> hardship, anything with you. So, you know. Thank you. Um, go tweet. Go tweet that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we keep getting this thing about okay, somebody is accusing you of a sixteen-year-old person. What is that? Mm -hmm. What's that? So, baby, it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, so I had an assistant illegally record me whenever. This, I want to just talk about this because I don't know if this has been part of your struggle. For I want to say this quickly. When you are in a position, a public figure, and you have to get an assistant, it is one of the scariest things in the world because you have to invite somebody into your life and give them your social security information, your credit card information, the the codes to get in and out of your house. I mean, you have to kind of trust sort of a stranger because they have to be on your emails and have access to things. Hi, I'm on a Zoom call. Love you. One of the dancers from Berlin just walked by the window. Um. So anyway, these people are very in close proximity to you. He, this man recorded me um, talking about a situation where somebody who lived in London um, was in a relationship and here the legal age of consent is 16 years old. And the person was like 20 or 22. They were in a consenting relationship. The parents had given him permission to date this, this person. They were in support of it. They flew to America on a vacation. They were intimate there because they were in a relationship, came back, broke up. The parents sued that person for statutory rape. And th that person was convicted because they broke the law in the country that we were in. As a, as a human being, I like to like 
I find things like that intriguing, interesting to talk about. I play the devil's advocate with everything. And I was like, that is such a crazy story. And when I was young, the first time I came, when I was 21, the first time I came to the UK, I was doing a musical. And by the way, just so you know, I, I lost my virginity at almost 25 years old. Not that that's anybody's business, but I was I was old. I So um, <laughs> that, that's old for somebody gay. I was very prude. I'm very like, you know, I am a, a theater nerd. I mean, T.S. knows this about me. I just, I love, I'm a bitch that loves Disney and I love yes, Broadway shit and The Wizard of Oz <laughs> and Beyonce, bitch. If it's a, those subjects, I know everything about it. Um, so this person tried to talk to me. And at that time I was basically like, how old are you? Cause I've been black my whole life. And I know, you know, you gotta ask questions like that. Um, and um, yeah, basically they told me they were underage, but it was legal here. I never, in, I never entertained dating that person. There is not a 16 year old person who's coming out saying I did something to them. Somebody chopped and screwed little pieces of conversations that I had and put it on the internet. And I, I just think as a general rule, when I hear somebody chop up somebody's conversation, I'm like, whatever they said before, in between and after they said that, you wanted that out because it would disprove the point that you're trying to make. They wouldn't have posted my whole sentence because they, they would have been like, I, there's obviously nothing problematic about it. I'm not somebody who gets away with things. So if I had hooked up with a 16 year old, the 16 year old, they would probably be white based on the internet's opinion of me. And they probably would have come out and I would be in jail. So my so my thing is basically what you're saying is that they try to entrap you in something. Mm -hmm. Is this, yeah. this they try to entrap you um, into uh, uh, being involved with a minor? They're but trying to make it look like I. Not, did trying, yeah, they, so they so basically they're trying to they're entangle trying. you in that, and 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 that's not what happened. They try to hit it at all. Yeah, try to hit her with the drink. Yeah, that's and so exactly. mm -hmm. yes, to whoever's over that's there. Mo. Mo. <laughs> he want to say yes. he, you tried to strike a chord. I guess it was a minor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what Mo was trying to do. Huh? <laughs> they not like us. They not like us. They not like us. So that what Mo was over there trying to give a day not like us moment. <laughs> you know, so um. This assistant that we saw Go ahead. recently, <clears throat> what mm -hmm. happened with that? Because this assistant was really, really, really trying to like tear the meat off of your back. I I don't even know. I feel like there's so much to say, and I I don't I don't even know what I could say about that, but. This is somebody that was very close to me that my parents loved and and that I know very well. And babes, it just, I mean, I think if you scroll down that assistance information in their pages, you will just see somebody who is not sane and somebody who is trying to like destroy me because I think, I know for a fact that at, at one point they were in love with me. They wanted to be, work closely with me. And when you fire somebody and they're like, oh, I can't be in their camp. And I also, I can't be with them. And I also can't work with them. Then that person is going to try to destroy you. And I don't, I don't know what has happened. And, and that's the reason why I, I think that this person is unhinged and crazy. And I think that time will prove that. Like, I, I don't, I don't know really what to say because whatever I say about this, he will just use for ammunition to like get more clicks and views on TikTok. And I'm not interested in like helping him um, try to get more attention. But I think that people, when somebody says something to you, consider the source. That's all I'm saying. And, and, and I, have prayed about this for a long time because I wanted to drop a bunch of receipts. I've talked to Well, this why don't place. you, Todrick, listen, I hear you, listen, when somebody has been trying to drop receipts on you and you have receipts on them to clear you up, well, you know what? I asked that question <laughs> and I've also been a victim of the things. <laughs> but you, the thing is you got great stuff going and if you go online, TS, and give somebody who is chasing you for clout because they have nothing going on for themselves. If I go and my mom has just been like, it is not worth it. Where you are going is somewhere great. I, I think that this is a lesson that you had to learn and it is not, 
it it's also like I think that this person is mentally unwell, and I think that like sometimes I'm like, you know what, Todrick, to whom much is given, much is required. You can handle this. Like, keep your head up. Do the Michelle Obama thing. It has been hard. It has been hard because the stuff that I could post about a lot of these people who go and talk shit about me is crazy. But I think. When Beyonce says best revenge is your paper, and when I'm on stage accepting my EGOT and the things that I want to do in life, to me, that is just bigger and better than any of, than any sort of, it was not going to make me feel good to get revenge. And I don't think the people who are buying tickets to my show, listening to my music, coming to support me, are listening to that noise anyway. I don't think they're listening to it. I think that it's just noise, and I don't really want to give it. I didn't even want to give it this much energy, but I feel like I need to at this point because I'm a human and I have made mistakes. I have fucked up a lot. I have, I'm a person that takes big swings. I'm like, great, I will do 750 videos. Nobody will produce more content than me. But at, at the end of the day, what I have learned from this is that there are going to be some people, there are people that have taken, I've taken a long time to pay that have been waiting for me that have had to text me several times to get my attention and stuff. And I started to be like, Todrick, you're only one person. You can only I take mean, that's so gonna much. Happen. That happens. Yeah. That's going to happen. But when you're black and when you're gay, it, it, it can't happen like that as many times. I mean, I've, I don't know what the math is, but if, if, if I have a lot of people in my videos, I don't know how many you would even say from watching them, but even on a low number, I don't know what the math would be, but if you do like 25 people times 750 videos it'll, on a low, and Nels Hair Hips Hill had 75 people on camera, but if it was 30 people times 750, that's a lot of people, <laughs> like right. tens of thousands of people I've worked with. Would you say that you're happy? Are you happy? I think that in moments I'm happy, but I think that the internet is a really crazy place. In the past few years, I have found it more difficult to be happy. I've always felt misunderstood. I think that a lot of people on the internet are under the misconception that I love whiteness so much and white people embrace me and that, and they love me so much. And I'm like, I'm still black to ever to to these white people and i and and my experiences with white people have been really really difficult as well because at the end of the day i do believe that a lot of white people when push come to shove they will act like they're close to you but when something happens and some shit goes Especially down the white because right their whiteness will always come up first they so, and they will protect their they will protect the white people even if that person is wrong you know so I'm, I'm curious just, to know like how does that show up in your life like how does it show up in your friendships and your relationship in your professional space like how does that show up have there been moments since Trump was in the off in office going all the way back to when he first came into office and we see what's happening around the country with some white people and how they are on the offense against black people not letting black people come into their place of residence you, you know questioning black people do you belong here how does that show up for you have you been in conversations with your circle of friends who happen to be non-black where there's a point of contention because as a black person you see that same circumstance differently than they do I 100% almost every single day. And the thing is when you are close to whiteness and people feel like they can trust you, they sometimes let their guard down in a way they would not let their guard down in front of somebody else. And people will say things around me and I have to be the one person in the room that makes the room uncomfortable. But if I'm gonna be in the room, then I need to make it uncomfortable. I've had some uncomfortable conversations with Taylor Swift. I did, she talked about it. There were certain things that I had to say and when I was friends with her, I think you noticed that she started speaking up about a lot of things. Yeah, I have sat my friends down and been like, you have to watch the 13th Amendment on Netflix. That's just one thing that yeah. I want you to 13th. do. But yeah, because I think I do think that it is important for us to have the conversations because I think a lot of times because life is so hard and conversation conversations and confrontation are so scary and so much emotion is behind it that sometimes you're like, I can't even talk to somebody about this because if they say the wrong thing, I'm gonna fuck this bitch up, you know? Mm -hmm. And um I think that I can stay pretty even kill and I go and I talk to people and I and even in my relationships, I mean dating white people is is 
it's easy in some instances because mm -hmm. I think that they communicate really well, but they do not understand the moment that they're uncomfortable, how they want to be woke. But the moment you're uncomfortable, your privilege shows up where your wokeness should. And when it's time for it to be acted out in real life scenarios, some it, it, more times than not, the, the woke part of them, the part that's claimed to want to be a supporter of the community and try to be empathetic. That's not the part that shows up. Mm -hmm. and, and have you ever been called a nigger? Or, 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 or here's the question. Have any of them ever used the word nigger around you, got so comfortable that they did that? Um, I, I would not lie and say that I haven't heard somebody that is white say the N word before, for sure. But I, it, I, I don't think that they have been people that are, are close to me, A, and I definitely did not tolerate it. Yeah. And it, it's never been in like a uh, aggressive manner. It's been like, oh, they think that they can like rap this song or say mm -hmm. or quote something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I, I just don't even think you should. It, it's usually like something that slips out because they have gotten so comfortable. That's the position that I'm in. Yeah. And so sometimes I'm like, you don't get, it's interesting to me because we are now breeding a society of people who are so rehearsed and so they're almost politically like- correct. Like, politically correct. Like, this social media generation, it, it, it's like they they have publicists that are skilling them of what to say, when to say it, how to bite their tongue, how to say all the right things anytime, not just when they're on camera, when, when they are living their life. But to me, I almost think that's more dangerous than a bitch that would just say, I don't fuck with black people because now yeah. these these racists are running amongst us in disguise. They're not putting no fats, no films, no blacks, no Asians on their profiles anymore. They're not saying it and they're hiding it in disguise. And sometimes when people are not around, they want to be like, is it safe for us to say this? And that's when you find out who the real people are. I'm usually not a person that would be in a room like that, but I have friends. It, it's more like I have friends that say, I was at home for Thanksgiving and my parents or my aunt, my uncle said the N word. And I'm like, well, what did you say? And they said, well, I didn't want to ruffle any feathers. I'm like, then you're not really being an advocate. Right. Mm -hmm. Ad advocacy is not convenient, bitch. Right. You have to wait because that person now feels this is a safe space to talk them that they yeah. can come back and they can say it again. They can say more. And so I, I really hold my, my white friends feet to the fire. And I say, if you're going to stand next to me and pretend to be an advocate, um, cause I think a lot of times people, they want to be around you when it's convenient, when it's beneficial for them. And when it's no longer beneficial, like then their advocacy shows up. They want to be like, I was mistreated at this job. I'm like, but you stayed at that job every single day, accepting things. They had to fire you for your advocacy to show up. That's not an advocate. That is somebody who is Listen. an opportunist. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> so who is Colleen? Because I keep seeing the right Colleen down here. Mm -hmm. what the, who is that? Is she a white woman? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who is she? Is she, is she somebody that said nigger? I don't, I don't think that Colleen has ever said the word. Well, who is she? Because they keep asking about yeah, Colleen. Yeah, they keep writing Colleen down here. Okay. So, <laughs> this is not how I expected this interview to go. Well, right? I mean, I this is what I, well, listen. We, and look, and, and the follow-up question is, if this is something you can talk about, you said you and, and Taylor were friends. What happened? How did that you know, friendship dissolve? I didn't I don't remember saying we were friends, but we are still friends. I'm just saying oh, okay. when 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 we first started being friends at, during the time of um the uh reputation era, she went online and talked about in like a Vogue interview or something mm -hmm. and said um um, Todrick, conversations with Todrick is part of the reason I started standing up for the LGBTQ plus community. She became very vocal politically. Yeah. And, um, and I was, that was something that I was like, I appreciated that so much when we accepted the award. Um, you know, it, it was one of those things where she was like, I would like for you to accept this award on MTV on my behalf. Um, we're, we're, there's never been like a problem with Taylor and I, and we're not like okay. as close as we used to be, but, um, but she still, I still text her and oh, she responds okay. and, you know, I love her. I think she's incredible. Um, what was the other question that you it's asked? Colleen. Me? Colleen, cause baby, they is Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So Colleen Ballinger, she is a friend of mine for over 10 years. She, um, she, um, 
plays the character. She's more famously known for being the character Miranda Singh. She is a person that is a big musical theater lover. We grew up on YouTube around the same time. And, um, and yeah, that's basically who she is. And they're probably talking about it because I recently posted a couple pictures where it was National Theater Day. We did Waitress the Musical together. She was my girlfriend in this musical on Broadway. She was Dawn, mm -hmm. I was Ogie. And I started posting things from Kinky Boots in Chicago. And I posted a clip from Waitress, which by the way, I'm never on stage without her. And she had a lot of controversy and has been very, very canceled for a, a, a number of things. And, um, I think that my general problem is like when I first got on YouTube, there, there was like, um, they would bring you into rooms and like have these YouTube conventions and I would be invited there because I was a, a popular YouTuber at that time. But I was mm -hmm. nowhere near as popular as the white people that would be in those rooms. I think they invited me so that they, that I could be present and so they could have a quota filled. Anyway. DEI. Uh, yeah. So, but in those meetings, they would talk to us about um, how you have to collaborate with people. Huh? I was telling Mo, I can't. Uh, the comments is, I mean, they are, I don't know who this Colleen is, honey, but they are, it's so much. You don't <laughs> see the comments, Todd? No, he can't. I can't. I can't see the comments. No, thank God I can't see them. Um, okay. So here's the thing. Ba basically, me and Colleen have been friends for a very, very, very long time. And she um, she was one of the few people, there was a lot of white people that would be nice to me and cordial to me and, like, and, and be kind in my face. But whenever it came time to collaborate, they would always tell us we should collaborate with each other. I would get their numbers. They People would not respond to me. Colleen was one of the only people, one of the people who was like in the end club, one of the white people that had tons of followers that was like, I'll collaborate with you. I think you're talented. She offered her platform to me. She was very sweet. I well, lived with her. her around her. Why was she canceled? That is a long, it's a series of things. You know, when people get Honey, canceled, she I, got see canceled. Them, I see them down there. They're saying she's a groomer. groomer. What does that mean? Yeah, I'm just not putting them on there. They're saying she's a any. groomer. She's a, uh, oh my God. I'm just not putting it up there because of these are, yeah. these she are, was having BCology, BCology. Girl, that's like a having, lot of shit. Yeah. Who is this? Her dog? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Woman, please. I need to see this. Do I need to Google her because you're please. not telling us who Colleen is? I need to know what's going on because the people down there know she was a popular is. YouTuber. She's known for the character Miranda Sings. That's who she well, is. What, what's her, oh, what's her he scandal? don't want to say. He don't want to say her scandals, and it's okay. We're not. I don't know. I'm not saying I don't want to say the scandal, but it's like a lot of things. That's why the comments are that's, going. You know, y'all still friends? Murder. Go to Google. Let me see who this motherfucking Colleen bitch is. There she is. <laughs> She's a well, well, what's well, give us the cliffs notes of who she is and why well, she's. Listen, I'm gonna read it because Google gonna tell oh, yeah, me. Google's, Google's gonna tell us what's going on. How you doing? Oh, good. How are you doing? I see you on the oh, camera. How you doing, is, baby? Why was, <laughs> why was Colleen Bellinger's? It says YouTuber Colleen Bellinger's upcoming live shows have been canceled amid ongoing backlash over her alleged relationship with underage fans. Oh. Separately, Trisha Payata said, Oh, let me click on this. We did it. Uh, hold on. She said in a YouTube video that her podcast bed was done. Uh, Mo, this is too much shit popping up on yeah, here. Yeah, I know. I know. Okay, so essentially, basically, she, she, she is so much. That's what I'm saying. There's, she basically had, she talked to her fans, and a lot of her fans were underage. And her character has like a lot of potty humor. She was had a relationship with this, this, um, this white kid who was from another country. I don't remember what his name is. And he, um, he, um, she sent him some lingerie on a live stream. Like she pulled out some lingerie and said, Do you, what, um, basically she sent it to him and then ultimately it just like i don't want to misspeak and like oh uh, and they said she, she was, was in, in blackface. blackface she was never in blackface she she was in green face she was dressed up as alphaba from wicked and they tried to make it seem like she was in blackface uh, and she was not but um but she um she she um 
basically had a relationship with this kid on the internet where they were they were friends and i don't know how the the situation all went awry it's, it's hours and hours worth of stuff but ultimately people are upset that i have still stayed in touch with her and that i am still friends okay with her, so let's play devil let's play devil's advocate here a person says you're still friends with her and then you have this 16 year old situation in, in situation going on with you wouldn't you see that as something that the people would, would try to correlate and then try to say like see we knew it right i think that 100 percent. but that's why i'm saying i am now like trying to like you said has it been hard earlier today you were like how it has it been difficult for you mm -hmm. i have watched something happen ts you know this there are some people who are beloved on the internet and they are terrors in real life. And there are people who are incredible, incredibly kind and people hate them on the internet. And I have just watched people distance themselves from me over things that they thought were true. And I just am not really interested in like, and not being friends with somebody because the internet has said things about them. When I know that in every situation, it's usually not black and white, there's some sort of gray area. I also don't condone anything that anybody, that every, there's not one person who I condone everything that they do, but if somebody has been a friend of mine for a long time, I said this on a comment before, I have an, an uncle who murdered somebody. I'm not gonna love my uncle any less because I know that he did a lot of things before and after that incident. He paid his time, he went to jail, and he's my fucking blood. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna not agree with the fact that he murdered somebody, but I'm gonna love him forever. And I, nobody can make me not feel that way, you know. So, so let me continue to play devil's advocate here. Mm -hmm. She's a white she's a white woman. Yeah. You are a black gay man. Yeah. Um. Do you think Come that on. she would have distanced herself in a heartbeat? Because if you didn't ask her, I was going to ask it. That she would well, have I know that I have been canceled heartbeat. before, and she did not distance herself from me. Okay. I have been. I I know that to be. It's it's can be proven in the like it can be documented, but but I also am not going out advocating for her. I'm not going online being like I am. Colleen's number one fan and I stand by everything that she did because I, I don't stand by everything that she did but I'm not also going to pretend that she's dead I'm not going to act like I, I'm not going to unfollow her on social media I'm not going to not talk to her I don't post her on my social media you follow me you would know who she was if I was posting about her all the time yeah because I didn't know like are they right no you know that's, I, that, you know, that's I, like I, the field of I just think that life is so short and we are flawed as human beings we make humongous mistakes and we the, the internet should not be the judge jury jury and um whatever the that and executioner me, the, the, the executioner. internet should not be the judge jury and executioner now yeah. I got one more devil's advocate thing, advocacy thing that I want to do here. Yeah, okay. You and I both are in a space now where we are, uh, we're black and recognizable people. You've been on yeah. American Idol. You've been on American, Big Brother. You've been on American Idol. You've been on Big Brother. Yeah. Do you think you going on Big Brother was a positive situation in your life, or do you think that it was a did, did it, it had a negative effect on you? I think that it has a very, very, very negative effect. So this, this is actually one of the questions related to. Okay. It says, uh, "I'm late. Tired of speaking. Stand on Big Brother. Any takeaways or things you would change? Love you, Maddie. Hi, Jermaine. Mm. Um, hi, Jermaine and Matt and Craig. Fine ass. Um, <laughs> um, Craig, you are so handsome, baby. <laughs> are you saying that to me, or are you reading a comment? Thank you, Todrick. No, no, I said that it was a comment. It was a spoken comment from. Y'all don't well, start well, this. Todrick, I'm gonna be in. Um, I'm gonna be in London in, in August. Y'all don't start this homosexual shit. I want to know <laughs> what happened on the Big Brother. God damn it. Tell us about it. You brother. said it again. Y'all can do all this faggot shit in five minutes from home for five minutes from now. <laughs> Um, do I expect, is it, no, it was not a good experience. It was a, a horrible experience. I, I'm a big fan of the show. Um, and, and I went on there to try to win. It was $250,000. I was supposed to be in rehearsal for my tour. I was like, if I'm going to miss rehearsal for my tour, I'm going to go in there and fucking try to win this thing. I'm, I'm, I'm 
I think I am decently competitive. And if I go on the show and I went on Mass Singer, I'm like, I'm going to jump my ass off of 15 foot tall buildings, whatever I have to do to try to make it to the end of Mass Singer. And I came in second on that show and I came in second on Big Brother. I'm a huge Big Brother fan. And I just think that there is that, that there is a double standard. There are people, white people specifically, who have gone on that show and acted a fucking plum pool and have been adored beloved their fan favorites and have been brought back on that show over and over and over again do i think that i handled everything the way that i should have no but there there was a there were a lot of things that happened on that show that people didn't see that show gives people a false sense of like oh we know everything that happens because there's live feeds but there are like six rooms in that house the live feeds show two of those rooms and i believe the cbs producers like didn't show a lot of things that ultimately did affect the house there were some times where they were like we're not going to show this because it'll make the um the um certain people it, it was things that happened that were so bad that the producers were like we are not going to air this um i didn't punch nobody i didn't cuss nobody out i didn't throw no drink in nobody's face things that the real housewives would do on every single season it would be in a highlight reel i don't know what it is and maybe somebody in this comment section could tell me but i think that there is a we are held to just a different standard and what yeah. things that we sometimes do was I perfect on the show? No. Were there things I should not have said? But there was this girl on the show, and people will protect like white blonde people at all costs. This woman went online and she, on, on the show, and they they said that I said something about an intruder in her house that never happened. No one has footage of that. They on the show that they swear films everything. This woman never told me that the things that I said to her were said to her by an intruder ever. And and it ended up being this like humongous um, ordeal, you know? Um, and, and I was like, no one even ever said, like the 16 year old that doesn't exist. Um, so to me, I'm just like, Julie Chen, who has been the host of that show for years, was like, Todger came on this show and played regular Big Brother on a Celebrity Big Brother season. I was not on there to try to win Miss Congeniality. I didn't know those people before I went into that house. And they, and I, and I'm friends with some of them now, but I went in there to win, to win a quarter of a million dollars to, and, and to play the game. And that game is played and won by people manipulating, backstabbing. There are no things off the table. You can do whatever you want. It's like poker, you know, like you're allowed to lie to people and you do whatever you have to do to be the last man standing. And I did that, but I should not have been on that show, which is why I won't be on any more reality shows anytime soon. So basically I should, I should have turned that offer down that they offered me for the one in, in, in the UK. Big brother. But oh, I did, think that, did I spill that? Yeah, you did. Oh, okay. Baby. Let me tell you something. You are you are different though. You are a person that's like, I don't give a fuck. I dare a bitch to come for me. Who what bitch gonna try me? I don't think that people would do that with you because you stand I did try to get in that motherfucking house. Cause babe, let, let me tell you something. I'm going in that bitch with a great goose bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and tell the motherfucking host, bitch, everybody name on the end of this bitch right here. Label Everybody's <laughs> name on the end of this motherfucking bitch right here. See, I need some of that. What you have, I need that. But <laughs> Todrick, again, I'm in my devil. I'm in my devil's advocate mode right now. Todrick, people think that you're white. They think that you're a white boy. They think that you're white. Why do they think I'm white? Well, they think that you're white because you give it. It's give, but you can't help that. That's what. That's yeah, what. That's how you were. This is just, yeah, that's the thing. You I, can't I, I help it. My whole life with people being like, you act white. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you about that. I can't be anything that that I that I'm not. I grew up. You know, I mean, this. When I was in elementary school, my teacher called me a nigger. My mom found out about it, and I was in the school in the hood where the where the um they would have sanctioned that I was supposed to go to school. My mom went to that school. I almost blew that motherfucker up and said, I need him to be out of this school. And and they knew she wasn't playing and they moved. She They said, pick whatever school you want him to go to. I went to, I then moved to the school where all the privileged kids went. And that's how I got, I got tested for the gifted and talented program. The way I just, it can make me cry right now to think about the way we were treated in the school that I was in, the way the halls 
smelled, the way the walls were painted, the way the books looked, the extracurricular activities that we got to choose from. It was night and day. I didn't go to a private school. I went to a public school in the same city. I went there and when I walked into that school at six years old, my whole life changed. That's why I know that privilege is a thing because I see it, I experience it with the people I'm close to. And I also have benefited from it because I went to that school, they introduced me to theater, they started taking me to things. I wasn't afraid that I was gonna get beat up or whatever. And what do you know, I started learning shit. Um, so then they put me in dance. And when I was in dance, I was the only black kid, the only boy and the only black kid my whole life. Every show I auditioned for, I was in the National Tour of Beauty and the Beast, the only black person in the show. I was worked at Beauty and the Beast at Disneyland. There was very few black people there. I was in the Nutcracker for 10 years. And when you're around those people and they become your tribe and you're doing theater, and it's the only place where people are validating you and saying you're talented and they're not acting like you're broken for being gay and for whatever, then you are like, this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour all my energy into this. And so here's, here's, this, this is the perfect segue. I think that just by sheer virtue of what you just said about privilege, because we talk about privilege here, privilege here, and I've said to Madison, she has privilege that some trans women don't have because she can move through the space, through the world without people clocking her. You have privilege because of opportunity. I'm a big believer that white folks, the only thing that they have over, over us is access. Oh, is access, right? So when you move to that new school, you now had the same access that they had. So for me, and the reason that I sit here and I speak so un unapologetically black, and I too have been hurt by the black community as you two have, you know, mm -hmm. just because I'm a black Well, I've definitely been hurt by Because I'm a black gay man. But what I'm saying is, I still think that is it, it is incumbent upon me to make room and make space for other black and brown people in the same rooms that I'm in. So when I try to create space and create opportunities, I think it's I think it's I think it's a duty. I think it's a responsibility because when you're doing your videos and you're doing shows, I think it's important to bring in other black and brown people and trans people or whatever it is because if we don't do it, they definitely are not going to do it. Yeah. And so you know what I'm saying? So that's just the way that I come from. So while there are black people that have hurt me and have said evil things and have come in my life and said crazy things, I can't I can't punish the entire black community because of a crop of black people. You know what I'm saying? So for I me, do. even like when we did the TS Master Experience, correct. We were very much so like we need to have black and brown people. Yeah, I, I actually I actually delayed the show a month or two months. Because they, I needed them to get together. I needed a black staff. I needed a black. I needed black producers. I needed black women in here. I was very angry that I don't give a fuck. I was very angry that we had black. Uh, uh, excuse me, that we didn't have any black um, post producers mm. because there were post producers that you know that. Put 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 motherfucking Oliver over Oliver, in Dr. King's house. Dr. King, like, <laughs> don't catch that, you know. And mm -hmm. this is why when we do black shows that are white led, you know, it's important for them to step back and let us do this. And it's important that when we are in those spaces that we speak up, because if we're not going to speak, and I'm not saying that you you don't, because but you, do you, you Tadri? I do 100. percent I really do, and I'm so passionate about. You can tell. Yeah. You know what I mean? You it's can tell how passionate. I, sorry. No, I'm I was just saying it's important you. when we're in those spaces, not even just in entertainment. I'm talking about even in corporate America. I have a friend who just left Revlon. She was she. They have less than I think one percent black V senior level VIP. She just left there because this whole uh, perception of being politically correct. They only do it when they have to, and that's why. It, it, it is, it's almost tragic that they're now removing like DEI from different because now these companies don't have to have a responsibility. There's no social responsibility or law now to require that black and brown people or women are in these spaces. And so that's why when we're in these spaces, it's important for us to say, oh, no, 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 no. I need to have. And I'm not saying bring black and brown people in just because they're black and brown. Yeah. I'm saying bring them in because they're talented and they would not get a seat at the table otherwise. Otherwise. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Now, Todd, I, I think this is so, so, so important. That's why that's why I've been reaching out to TS because I'm like, I mm -hmm. want somebody 
to be close to me, to be somebody that I that I can confide in, because I think that we need people who look like us in this industry because this industry is really hard and it's not kind and not fair oftentimes yeah. to us. And so when I talk to somebody like TS and like you now, Craig, I you know mm -hmm. I hope that we can you continue. You feel comfortable? To yeah. yeah. Yes, and people yeah. have been asking me to talk about this shit for a long time, and I'm like, yeah. I feel comfortable going on somebody's show that I don't feel like it's for me. Why would I? Yeah, yeah. And, I and listen, I'm not. We just laying everything that done been said out because yeah. you know I know how I feel about the shit personally because we've talked to off. Now, there's one thing that we didn't clear up that we need to clear up. Yes, baby. That that house. Yeah. That house that you went, you walked us motherfucking through, bitch, when you had got it and, and all the Louis Vuitton stuff and the Vuitton this and that, and you had those lavish parties by the pool and this and this stuff. There were two scandals that happened. One scandal was the house was broken into and you knew who broke into the house. Yeah. The second scandal was that the house was rented. Yeah. I, need you to, I need you to lay that shit right there, right now. And okay. What you told me. So which one do you want to know first? Let's talk about the house being rented. Okay. So when I moved into the house in 2021, I, by the way, I just want to say this because I feel like sometimes people are like, oh, he has so much money and he just is whatever. I bought that house because I sold, because I got canceled in 2019. And I said, if I were to get canceled right now, I would have nothing to lean on. I'm going to take, my friends told me you could sell your streaming rights to your music and they will give you a big old check. And I got that check and I said, I'm going to go buy myself a house that I love. I fell in love with that house, but um, I don't have, have credit. I had never bought a house before. So they basically let me have like a year long escrow where I put down a lot of money, more money than you would be putting down to rent a house. And basically, I was buying yeah, it and renting it at the same time. Own. Got it. Yes. It was a rent to own. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it, it was a slightly different scenario than rent to own, but essentially it was that. Basically it was like, while you are closing this escrow, you will also be renting the house. And we need you to come up with this amount of money in order for you to close this escrow. And so they were like, we will give you a year to do this. And during this year, you will put down over a million dollars to move into this house. That would not, you would never do that if you were renting. And then you will pay an, a substantial amount of money every single month in order to keep mm -hmm. this house like paused in an escrow until you can close whatever right. so that's what happened with that which is that that's anybody who has ever bought a house before is like yeah that's a way that you could buy a house so when people when this story came out that i was late on my rent which was true um that happened when i was in the big brother house the, my business management did not pay my rent um but it seemed like it was for like such a long time because the money was a lot of money but it was two months. It was the month of February and the month of March. And I got out of that house on February 28th. So it was two days after I got out of the house and I was fully being canceled. Um, but the other thing, what was the other thing that you asked me about? Uh, that your house got robbed. Oh, yeah. And when your robbed. house got robbed, we were over here in <laughs> what? Don't do we that. thought it was a, we thought it, we thought it was a fact that we knew. Yeah, a mutual person, but we're not gonna say. Yeah, we're not because he's gone on. Yeah, we're not gonna do to that. glory. <laughs> but, but you know, when we when when that house got robbed, <laughs> and when the house got robbed, the story came out again. And once the story came, out, story again, came out again. Well, because the story was out about the house, about you not owning the house and all this type of stuff and blah, yeah, blah, blah. It's happened like, in reverse, but I know what you're talking about. The house then, got robbed and then the story came out about me. But yeah. then the house got robbed and then it was like, okay, well, you knew who robbed it, but you didn't want to press charges on it, which made people, which made the street start saying that you were in collusion. That you were in collusion. collusion. <laughs> 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 I'm a, a bunch of black card on the table. Now, where does it, where's that line from? I have no idea. Oh. Uh, we were trying to have you redeem we were yourself. For you we just were now. I'm for you. not redeemed. I have no idea. <laughs> he he, he said he, he didn't grow up. He said he didn't grow up watching. Okay, well, when you had to set it off, come out. That was from set it off. Yeah, it was from set it off. <laughs> oh, got it. Vivica Fox said collusion. Collusion. <laughs> That's how you know it wasn't collusion. Yeah. Okay. I do not know that quote, babe. So <laughs> they were saying that you were in collusion with it uh, and that you were. And that you were you were um, doing a, a, a like insurance insurance fraud. fraud. Oh yeah. Okay. Is that and the so end of the question? Yeah. Go ahead. 
Um, you, okay, so me, I, you don't already told me what happened. But yeah, I just so I, I, I did out. know. I did know the person who um who who robbed me because that person was somebody who had worked for me for eight years and they were at my house a couple of days before I went on the um on this trip. So I knew that they knew that I was gone because they were somebody who like performed something for me and they they would they would come all the time to the house. That sounds like it's a sexual favor, but they were somebody who like did cosmetic <laughs> stuff. Like they cut my hair. Um, <laughs> Wait, wait, I'm like, they came and performed some shit on me. Favor. You said, you said <laughs> something about a sexual favor. They <laughs> <care>. <laughs> um, no, but okay. So basically, yeah, basically they they robbed me. And when I saw it on the video camera, um, I was going, I was flying to London, by the way, when, when this happened. And my next door neighbor was like, somebody just robbed your house. Um, when I saw the video, the footage, I kind of knew who it was because I knew it was somebody straight and black, and there's not that many straight guys that come to my house. And the person knew exactly oh, how black. to navigate my house. No, <laughs> Don't do this. I, I'm Don't. I, I had to say that. I had to say that, Tasha. <laughs> I had to say that. <laughs> but somebody black was in my house, so there you go. Um, well, um, you, so... you let a nigga in once. <laughs> you give a nigga a hit. You take your TV. Stop. <laughs> I can't. And once upon a time, your VCR. <laughs> oh my. God. I'm screaming. <laughs> you see what we did there? See that? Yes. I do see what you did there. Go <laughs> ahead. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to get out kicking out. Hold on, Todd. Hold on. Ah, that, was, that was funny. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. See, you can't sit on no show with no crockers and let them say no shit like that. Cause the fact <laughs> that they're tearing the motherfucking head right. off the door. That's right. <laughs> please, please invite me back on this show, please. I need it. <laughs> yes, you have to. I need it. You know, Not let me try to bring talk to London. So I know, um, I know. I'm gonna help y'all do that, that. for sure. <laughs> right. And I'm gonna be a special guest at the show when you come. Yes, yes guy. Yes, for sure. Oh, um, uh, wait. <laughs> Not y'all playing patty cake. Um, okay, basically, long story short, the when I found out who it was, I saw I saw the picture. Then the person um, across the street gave me their their um, camera footage, and I saw them pulling up in the car and putting stuff over their face to disguise themselves. But when the cops came, they were like, "If there was no like, if there were no guns, no weapons, if nobody was injured." The, a, a, there was three people. You would have to identify all three of them. They would all have to be convicted. It's not like a fast thing. It go, you go through a court process. And when they go, they were like, there's been so much theft in, in Los Angeles right now. A lot of celebrities, a lot of the houses yes. are getting robbed. And when people yeah. go to jail, they will probably only be there for a year to 16 months. They're not going to be there for a long period of time. And I started thinking, like, I'm going to have kids one day and stuff. I'm like, what's going to happen when this person, if they go, if all three of them go, when they get out? And to me, it just wasn't worth it. And by the way, I thought that my insurance would replace some of those things, which is not a thought I had beforehand. I'm not, I, I don't even know. I didn't even know that that was a thing until my business manager told me afterwards, well, you have insurance even on your things. I thought you could only have like home car insurance. Um, but the insurance kind of wasn't shit. And they didn't, they, if I didn't have physical receipts of like all the bags and stuff that they stole from this, like some of those bags I bought in Australia, some of them I bought in, in London, then they didn't reimburse me for them. And I would have had to like come there so i got based maybe one third of the stuff that i lost yeah. reimbursed and the money for it and most of them were like one of a kind bag not one of a kind but like bags that were yeah. discontinued so i couldn't replace them and but to me it wasn't worth it it was like scary to me to think about the fact that he might come back again but this time with vengeance i was like i'm just gonna let it go um i'm not really that confrontational so i was like it's a material thing I had cats at the time. I was like, I'm glad my cats are still alive. I knew it was somebody straight also because the bags that they stole were like not, that there were things in there that they could have taken that, that a faggot would have known what it was and they and they didn't know what it was. So I was like, somebody straight did this job, you know? Right. Um, but to me, it wasn't worth it to, to press charges on them because the, the consequences wouldn't have been... What we what you say? Wait, we were telling him, we were telling the straight that they ain't got no taste. So don't they wouldn't know. They wouldn't know. Don't do that. 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 Don't do that.
Well, we're not even talking about stealing. We're talking about taste. Taste. Yeah, but you're but you're talking about the people that stole. Not having taste. Right. You know y'all don't have no taste. I have taste. Bland. My, my Bland. taste. Bland. Unseasoned hard. taste. Listen to me. When I put Jerome in your life, <laughs> you start to look like something. Don't do that. Don't do that. I just wasn't. <laughs> I just wasn't regularly when I, when I put Jerome in no, your life. No, don't do that. I just wasn't like regularly that. doing my hair because oh. I was always having to find. I was always having to find somebody. And, and that straight woman that was doing your hair wasn't doing it like that. Because that's that, because that's, that's, because, well, that's, she did, that's she did, a hairdo. She wasn't a barber neither. It Jerome don't matter about her being, a That's a hairdo, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're gonna give the facts that credit. You didn't have any coof about yourself. Honey. <laughs> you came over here with the figs, and we had to teach you some coof. <laughs> Cooth and class. Cooth and class. And honey, that's why we got you over here. This is why you're an honorary adjacent fit. Okay. <laughs> and and you had better for the for the for, you better better for the rest of your life. <laughs> Tatra, he used baby wipes you, now. You had better for the for the Ooh. rest of your life. He wasn't using baby wipes before. Don't do that. No. Don't do that. You First of all, you, you, better have, you better rest it for the rest of your First life. First of all, don't do that. He wasn't. He wasn't don't using baby wipes before. You had better for the. You had better for the. You had better for the rest of your life. You had better for the rest of your life. Give honor to the fit. Y'all so messy. Y'all are so messy, and you are too. And that's why. That's why he woke up. I, I know we gotta let you go, though, Tadju. Tadju, listen. Is this after midnight in London? <laughs> listen. Yes, I baby. I hope that you came here and you felt relieved and safe. And you know we were gonna be a bit messy, but we were we were definitely not going. We're not nailing you to the cross, no. Because at the beginning, middle, and end of the day, sh shit happens. And you're still a black fag like us. Yes, and mm -hmm. you're a star. And there there are people who will try to diminish your presence. As being a black gay man, because they don't want to, they don't, they only want to give a few of us the title star. They don't want to give it to me, so I definitely give it to myself. And they don't want to listen. I'm going to always tell them, hoes, I'm rich. I'm going to always do that <laughs> <laughs> because they don't want me to. They don't want to see me thrive in my in my wealth. That's why this. That's why when I was reading that bitch earlier on my Instagram page, honey, who came forth and was talking about. She's she has six kids, and I went on her page. I'm like, girl, in that two bedroom apartment. The reason let's let's speak about why you're really angry, sweetie. I said that I'm a transgender woman. You came over here talking about I'm a botch body, and I don't have I'll never be a woman. Also, I said transgender woman. I didn't I even said I was not even a female, and you came with a lot of it. The reason you're angry is because I'm a black successful trainee who stands in being a trans. Motherfucking gender woman with titties at the top, dick at the bottom. Bitch, your six kids with that pussy you got was not my struggle. That was yours, <laughs> bitch. Period. And I laid down on my motherfucking on, 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 in the in a dark room, bitch, and got my motherfucking body pump, bitch. But guess what? I sold the pussy that you got, bitch. That did nothing for you, girl, and it bought me two, three houses, girl. <laughs> so my thing is, don't be angry with me. Don't hate the motherfucking player. Hate the game. Hate the game. <laughs> Tadric, thank you so much for doing this. I love y'all. Thank you so much for having me. I really, 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 truly appreciate it. Look, we're gonna stay in touch. Us. We're gonna stay in touch, and you know, because I'm, I'm gonna always be behind you to encourage you to take your blackness with you in every space that you're in. Thank you. But I, I will be there in, uh, yeah, in August. Yeah, we're gonna talk, and we'll talk after this. And I, I want you to know that we love you here, even though I Craig love you. Is, even though Craig made me send that motherfucking voice note that day about to be a shade. Well, girl, you know he had the. And so I was like, this is the only, this is the proper, proper place for you to come back and be like, well, bitch, here it all go. Mm -hmm. I, uh, Craig, I how do you feel about us now? I rest your body because I know you ain't eating nothing but that white people food over there. I'm over here. I'm over here sneaking bites of pizza, bitch. This is what I've been doing. That's, 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 how, that's all you're going to live and breathe off is pizza over there. Because ain't nothing else. That pizza look good, though. Ain't nothing else. <laughs> oh, it's cool. Are you hungry now, Mo? I'm starving. Miss Mary, we ready! <laughs> right. I'm starving. Right. I love y'all so I love you too, babe. Bye. Bye.